This is a little uh, switch illuminator flute that I added to an order when I was uh, getting some electrical stuff. And it's basically speaking a clear plastic frame that when you sandwich it between the switch and the wall, so here's a typical British switch. When you sandwich it between the switch and the wall uh, and then connect it in the back, it should theoretically glow at night time and uh, show you where the switch is. And the way it works is this. If I uh, just bring in a notepad here. If you get, say, live, going through a switch, through the light bulb, um, whatever, whether it's LED or otherwise, they do say that it's really recommended for LED lamps, which is a bit of a cop, uh, tungsten lamps are a bit of a cop out. But uh, what this does is it basically goes across the switch. And it means that when the switch is closed, when the lamp's on, then there's no voltage across that, so this little plate won't be illuminated. But when you turn the switch off, then 240 volts, in our case, the mains voltage, in the America it would be about 120 volts, Europe it would be about 230, in our case it's supposedly 230, but 240, appears across that switch and you can use it, uh, in the case of this older MK style unit, you can use it to power a couple of neon indicators with presumably a resistor in series with that. In this one, it looks like an LED with a couple of components. So let's open this up and see, well, should we try it first? No, we'll try it at the end. Uh, so let's open it up first. I'm quite intrigued to see what they're using for the circuitry. It doesn't look very complicated. I can see what looks like a diode and a resistor and the LED. The LED is pointing up into a sort of light guide is the best way to describe it. And I'm not sure if these angular bits are sp specifically designed to help spread the light out. Maybe even that angled edge is supposed to help spread the light. I'm not sure. Um, we'll find out how well evenly, how evenly it lights it uh, later on when we try it. If you're doing it with two-way switching, it goes across the strappers. That was rather easy to come off. I wasn't expected to come off that easy. Is the circuit board going to come out? That's, the circuit board is glued in. Do I really want to do this? Oh, it's out now. So what have we got? We've got a LED, we've got a diode and a resistor. Let's uh, bring the notepad in and uh, reverse engineer this. It's not really going to take long to reverse engineer, is it? One connection is going to the resistor. And then it's going straight to the LED, so the diode must be in line with the other. No, it's not. Oh, right, okay. I think I know what's happening here. Let's bring the meter in and test that. So we've got a standard diode, by the look of it. Yep. And I think that diode's actually across the LED. So one connection is going over to there. There's glue on that LED. Uh, and the other one is going to this leg, perhaps. I'll have to bite through the glue here. Oh, I'm not getting through the glue. It really is glued thoroughly in. Yeah, so the diode is across the LED. The resistor... Little magnifying glass here. 3303. Three, uh, it's four digit code, three, three, oh, and three zeros. 330k, let's put that to the test. Let's put it to two mega ohm position and stick this across the resistor. 330k. Okay, give or take a little tolerance. Right. So theoretically we can work out then, uh, well, the, the actual, the circuit diagram of this is, um, two wires come in, one is going straight to the LED, the LED also has a diode in inverse parallel across it to protect it from reverse voltage. And then it looks, to all intents and purposes, just to be a 330k resistor. It's a very small 330k resistor. It's tiny. I'm not sure what those are rated at. Um, what dissipation would it be? Uh, we can calculate that. Um, we can find out how much current's going to flow for a start. I equals uh, V over R. Um, so that would be calculator uh, 
that would in our case that would be 240 volts up 240 volts divided by uh, 330k equals 0.7 milliamps it's less than one milliamp so that's a uh, 0 0.7 Seven three milliamps, say, and the LED is only going to be lit for half that time. But keep in mind, this is for use in a dark room, and that multiplied by the two hundred and forty volt supply will give a dissipation from that resistor of 0.174 watt, zero one point one, say one seven five, uh, which isn't you know it's, it's less than a fifth of a watt, so it's not that bad. Now, how can I test this? If I put this back in and clip it into the frame. Uh, we could just connect it to the quick test, couldn't we? Because uh, the way it works, it, it, it's all it's uh, doing is it's being put in series with, with the lamp. Uh, that doesn't need the lamp there as the, the well. It doesn't need a lot of current. It's it's very very low current, so the lamp will just be appear as you know uh, to as far as this is concerned. The, the lamp will just pass as much current as it needs. Um, let's. Uh, Put this little clip back on in case it's needed for optical reasons. Is that it? I think that's it. It's not very complicated. Uh, and then I shall power it up. I've got uh, an older one of these uh, which doesn't work anymore, which was ne had a green neon in it, and it was quite nice, but um, it the green neons don't last a huge length of time, so it's still probably drawing current, but doesn't light up. But that one's built into the switch, so this shouldn't go bang, it should light. Oh, it's very, not very bright at all, but then it isn't intended to be, so I'm going to uh, turn this light off and uh, remove the automatic. That is just not visible at all. It's barely visible. Hold on. <coughs> okay, I will say that there's a slight glow around the edge, but most of the light is actually just firing straight out the top, as you can see there. Uh, it's pretty much as you see. That's what I'm I'm getting here. So there's not much light at the bottom, but I suppose it'll do the job. It'll guide you to the switch. If anything, the neons actually looks... Actually, the neons not brighter, is it? The white one looks... Actually, they're both fairly equal, but the white one is probably drawing less current. Rather a harsh, cold white, I thought uh, that, you know, they could have used a softer colour, like uh, blue or green as the identifier. But yeah, that's quite interesting. It, it'll do the job. I'm not sure if I'll actually use this. Uh, that flicker you're seeing on the camera will... It's not visible to the naked eye, but it is out the peripheral vision because it is lit for only half of the sine wave. So um, that's not great. But, um, but it is what it is. It's an interesting little thing.